We have Tyler here at the Carnegie on uh, Scott Scott Street in uh, Covington, Kentucky. Yeah, we're at the Carnegie here. Uh, we are a multidisciplinary arts center. We have both visual arts, theater, and an education program as part of our programming. Um, the Carnegie was founded in 1904 as a, the Kenton County Public Library. So behind me is uh, what was the library. And then uh, behind this building, uh, the theater was added on in 1906. The theater was built originally for speaking engagements for local or for authors who were touring to come and talk about their books and their work. Um, it was funded by Andrew Carnegie uh, and built by the county. Um, and it's been in operation ever since. And, you know, used in various different ways, but uh, it's been an art center for the last 30 or so years. Awesome. This is Andrew Carnegie, the uh, philanthropist that uh, uh, started everything. We're here in our main gallery at the Carnegie. Um, this space was the original library space. Downstairs here was the reading room. Um, uh, overlooking the space is this beautiful dome and rotunda with natural stained glass, um, historic, you know, it's beautiful historic architecture originally to the building. Um, and there's actually a kind of fun fact here, if you look at the floor over here, you'll see a big dark circle, and that's where the original circulation desk sat when this was a library. Um, so you can see, you know, its original use kind of uh, permanently burned into the space in an interesting way. Um, we do two exhibitions here a year at the Carnegie, uh, directed by Matt Desmore, gallery, or uh, exhibitions director. Um, the current show, Dynamics of Flow, uh, primarily features ceramics work. It was part of the Inseca conference, which is a ceramic educators conference. Um, and it was curated by three different curators who each chose different pieces in the exhibition. It continues in our upstairs galleries as well. And the pieces were chosen um, in sequence. So the one right in the center here was chosen first. Um, it's a ceramics piece. And then the one on the wall in the far corner, which is a painting, was chosen in response to this. So it became kind of a game of telephone where each one was chosen in response to the previous one. It starts by alternating ceramics, painting, ceramics, painting. But then as it goes on, much like a game of telephone, the, the rules kind of get blurred, the lines get blurred, and you have things that are kind of both or neither. Uh, take, you know, kind of find their place in the sequence of, um, of items in the gallery. Uh, so it's a really neat show. It runs through uh, August this year. We'll have another show starting in October that we'll have more information on soon. But there's always something cool and interesting to see. We highlight both local artists and regional artists and artists from all over the country and the world. Um, we try to use the gallery as an opportunity to elevate uh, the best local artists and put them aside, uh, you know, really well known national to elevate their profile. Um, but uh, it's open and free to the public. It's open Thursdays through Saturdays from noon to five. Um, so anyone's welcome to stop by anytime and check it out. And there's always a helpful, friendly face around to talk more about the work happening here. Excellent. Taking in the architecture of the crown molding and the structure itself. And here's a closer view of the dome, the attention to detail. You don't get craftsmanship like this anymore. Absolutely amazing. All right, Tyler. I spoke earlier about how the works in this exhibition kind of more from me about ceramics and paintings into something else. Um, these pieces here on the wall behind me are uh, by our student Jennifer Dorfell. And they actually are made of challah bread, um, you know, Jewish baked good, huh. um, that has been treated in a certain way and painted and made into these sculptural pieces. Uh, so, just an example of how the lines get blurred and suddenly it's a little bit of ceramic. It looks like a ceramic piece, it looks like a painting, but it's neither of both. Right. It's wow. It's amazing. Huh. That is wild. So it's made out of bread. You said? Yes, that's right. Yes. Wow, what will they think of next? People are so creative. And what about these pieces over here? These are paintings 
by Michael Stillian. Um, and you know, these are, I think these are very obvious response to a ceramic where it regularly featured these kind of ceramic vessels um, but with these kind of really expressive faces. They're kind of almost um, obscene. They're so graphic and um, grotesque, but really, really captivating. Really just use the color as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, kind of evolves throughout the pieces. Yeah, attention to detail. You know, it's kind of take, kind of, it, they grab you. Mm -hmm. Certainly, yeah. It's like you're kind of piercing. Their eyes are looking right at you. Indeed. Re well, they call, they call it realism, maybe? Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, the, the level of detail and the shadow work, yeah, it's really, there's a lot of interesting things happening there. Okay. Behind me, both the wall here and the case here are by Betty Woodman, who's actually one of the most prolific ceramic artists. Uh, and you know, having her work in this show alongside some younger artists or local artists really helps elevate their work because they're, see, you know, they're being seen in this exhibition with one of the most famous ceramic artists in the world. So it's kind of core to how the galleries here, um, you know, choose and highlight artists. That's awesome. Opportunity. Yeah, because the exposure is everything. Nice ceramic piece. What about these these paintings here are Betty's too? No. I don't know enough about these. I know there's some artists downstairs, but not the one to talk about them. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the theater here is my world, so sure, sure. The gallery I know, you know, enough about to say a few things about. Sure, sure. I'm not an expert there. Do we have something in in the, that room, these rooms yeah, over here? This is the cat room, huh? Yeah, these are uh, actually, these are kind of the fascinating, so they're ceramic. Right, let me cut that out, I don't know. And this? The same, yeah. Okay, well. I have a few highlights I can talk about. What, what type of, what, 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 what would you highlight about it? Thing in here? No, that's just a hallway. What, what about that picture right there? That is just, I don't know, that's, that's just when it's always there. <laughs> hey, you, you don't have any history on it or, you know, who made yeah, it or no, what? Matt and the gal Matt would know, but I don't know. You okay, know, okay. History of it. Sure, sure. Because it, it's interesting. Yeah, it is. Well, maybe we could start over here. You might want this. These are ones John Carl Carl is it about them? <laughs> Let me know when you're ready. Yeah, I don't know if I can say much about these ones. I don't know enough about them. I don't want to like say anything incorrect. <laughs> well what what type of art would you say this is? Um, the I can talk about the medium. <laughs> Pardon me? The medium is colored pencil on uh, I think they're actually oh, not. Okay, stand stand in stand in between them. And if you'll just say what type of expressive art it is. And what do we have here? Looks like a big mouth bass. <laughs> I'm probably wrong, but that's what comes to mind when I see it. you do that again? I'm sorry. Okay. So for some reason it wasn't on. Yeah, so this piece here um, kind of reminds me of the paintings we saw earlier with the faces and the ceramic pieces. Um, you know, it's kind of almost human away. Um, I think it's really a captivating piece. almost hard to look away from in the way that the artists have used different finishes. So the kind of glossy glaze on the mouth and the ears and then the more matte finish on the body of the piece. Um, it really feels like it's just kind of grown into this Interesting. 